Chapter 8, Social Stratification. Social stratification is a society system for ranking people hierarchically, and of course we're talking about from high to low, according to various attributes such as wealth, income, prestige, social position, power, age, sex, ethnicity, religion, occupation, we can go on and on and on. Almost any social attribute can be a basis for stratification. And what it does is it separates the rich from the poor, the powerful from the powerlessness, and of course our place in the stratification system is going to influence every part of our lives, where we live, what we eat, who we marry, and so forth and so on. Now class, I want to say that all human societies produce some form of inequality. In the simplest societies, the inequality may be due to the fact that one's family's fields produce more than others do, or that one family has accumulated a greater herd than others. And then in other societies, you've got periods of scarcity due to droughts, famines, and so forth, which may allow some families who are already well off to become even wealthier and more powerful. And these advantages may be passed on to the next generation and become part of the society's social structure. Now, social stratification involves four basic principles. One is social stratification is a trait of society, not simply a reflection of individual differences. Children that are born into wealthy families are more likely than children born into poverty to enjoy good health, do well in school, succeed in a career, and live a long life. Neither the rich nor the poor are responsible for creating social stratification, yet this system does shape the lives of all of us. Number two, social stratification persists over generation. Inequality persists from generation to generation because parents pass their social position on to their children. The social standing of most people does remain the same over their lifetime, but there are those that do experience social mobility, which is a change in social position. Number three, social stratification is universal but not variable. Social stratification is found everywhere, yet what is unequal and how unequal it is does vary from one society to another. And, of course, some societies display more inequality than others. And then last, social stratification involves not just inequality but beliefs. Every society does appear to have ideologies, which are cultural beliefs that justify social stratification. Ideologies are used to socialize new generations to believe that existing patterns of inequality are legitimate. Uh, for example, the idea that the rich are smart and the poor are lazy are certainly ideological to the extent that they define the wealthy as worthy, and, and they also suggest that the poor is also deserving of their plight. The common ideology of a class system is that wealth becomes a sign of personal talents and efforts, while poverty is viewed as a result of personal inadequacy. In the United States, most people do embrace the ideology of the American dream, which is the idea that in America, anyone who works hard can achieve success and wealth. But at the same time, we know that the odds of achieving great wealth are very low. This is one reason why people love to hear those rags to riches stories about hardworking people of modest means whose lives have been transformed by sudden lottery winnings. Two of the most basic forms of stratification are the caste system and the class system. In a caste system, an individual's worth is judged on the basis of religious or uh, traditional beliefs about the person or the fa person's family. It's a closed stratification system, which means it's very rigid and allows very little change in social position. In a closed system, class position is fixed at birth and cannot be changed by individual achievement. 
So membership in a caste is an ascribed status rather than an achieved status, which is based on the efforts of the individual. A pure caste system is closed because birth alone determines one's destiny with little or no social mobility based on individual efforts. A class system is based on both birth and individual achievement. In a class system, social level is defined in terms of wealth and status. This is an open system in which there is a great deal of mobility between the classes. So an open system is one in which people move up or down the ladder or social structure based strictly on personal efforts and their abilities. We in the United States are a class system and we know class that we can be rich one day and lose everything and be poor the next or vice versa. We can be poor, hit the lottery and be rich the next day. So there is an open system here in the United States. People who gain schooling and skills in a class system may be socially mobile in relation to their parents and siblings. And sometimes this mobility can blur class distinctions so that even blood relatives may have a different social standing. According to Max Weber, social stratification results from the interplay of three distinct kinds of inequality. We've got economic class position, we've got social status or prestige, and we have power. Now, sociologists do use the term socioeconomic status, which is SES, uh, to refer to a composite ranking based on various dimensions of social inequality. So this is a measure which considers income, education, occupation, when assessing a person's status. To give you an example class, someone in college is certainly ranked higher than someone with a high school grad, uh, grad, uh, degree. There is a difference between income and wealth. Income is your wages or salary from work plus earnings from any investments. And wealth is the total amount of financial assets minus any debt. Looking at the social classes in the United States, there are six categories of people. It's all based on wealth. The first one is the upper uppers. These are people who have inherited their family wealth, high status. In other words, it's old money. And of course, class, we're looking at less than 1% of the total population. The lower uppers, these are people who have income that is comparable to the upper upper, but they don't have that distinguished family background. So in other words, this is our working rich. The middle classes, we have several groups here. The upper middles is your moderately successful business and professional people, such as your physicians, engineers, lawyers, business executives. You're looking at anywhere from 116 to 205,000 a year. The average middle, these are people who are respected. They live in nice homes, work as low-ranking white-collar workers, foremen and craftsmen. Um, here you're looking at anywhere from fifty to 112000 a year. Um, and if you don't know what a white-collar worker is, these are those that traditionally require mental labor, uh, such as middle management office jobs. The lower middle class, which is the working class, these are your factory and, and your service workers. Uh, you're looking at your semi-skilled or unskilled workers, anywhere from, say, twenty-five to 50000 a year. These are the groups that are vulnerable to financial problems caused by unemployment or illness. And then we have the lower class. These are low prestige jobs with minimal income. So here we're talking about working poor. Uh, we're talking about the underclass. So uh, there's a couple of groups here as well. 
And class, I would say anything up to 25000 a year would be considered the lower class. Now, there are different types of social mobility. Upward mobility is a change to a job of higher rank. Uh, downward mobility is a movement to a job of lower rank. And in class, I hope that never, ever happens to you. Uh, the move downward could be because of business setbacks, unemployment, illness. We could name a range of things that would fall into that category as well. We have what is intra-generational mobility. This is a change in social class within an individual's own career. Um, and then we have inter-generational mobility. Uh, this is a change in social class from one generation to the next. It could be upward or downward in relation to one's parents. There is a difference between relative poverty and absolute poverty. Relative poverty refers to the deprivation of some people in relation to those who have more class. This is found everywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're a high income country or a low income country. And then absolute poverty is a deprivation of resources that is life threatening.